A reading from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 27, verses 50 through 56. Listen for the word of God stirring within and beyond these words of scripture. Jesus cried again with a loud voice and relinquished his spirit. Then look, the the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom in two. And the earth was shaken, and the rocks were split, and the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Then, after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were standing guard over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Now, there were many women there from a distance watching They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had ministered to him. Among them were Mary the Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. For the word of God in its promise and covenant. Thanks be to God. May we pray with one another. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire and lighten us with your celestial fire. For if we look for the resurrection, then nothing else matters. And if we do not look for the resurrection, then nothing else matters. Guide us toward the future you want and ultimately will have as we stand on the shoulders of the giants, the saints who have gone before us. We make this prayer in the name of the one who calls all creation toward justice and joy, peace and shalom. Amen. Wow, church. I've been away for three weeks or at least three Sundays I should say, and my, oh my, am I proud of you. The elders and I agreed that I would take the bulk of my vacation time and call it a trial sabbatical so that we could reaffirm what we know and discover, too, what we don't know. Y'all did it, and my heart is beaming with pride. You organized and coordinated worship. You recruited guest preachers, including Glennis and Soul, both of whom proclaim the word of God for the people of God. And though I have not yet edited the worship video from Creation Care Sunday, I am eager to do so because I long to hear what you had to say. Week one of vacation, I was with members of Bright Divinity School co-leading a retreat. Several of them asked, well, how's it going? And my smile betrayed me. I said, it's phenomenal. They said, we can't tell. (laughs) But there's more. During week two of vacation, I received notification of a member's death. And I follow, uh, followed, excuse me, I forwarded the message to Ron Dauphin and Don Haynes Jr. And they activated our contingency plan of what happens if there's a funeral and the pastor is away. Actually, during that same week, we received three total notifications of deaths within and among our church's extended family. I should mention, too, that the internet went out, or at least the internet was intermittent, and we lost our phone lines for a few days, missing one of those notifications of death. I was in the office Monday through Friday of that week, trying to figure out what was wrong. I checked the router 
all of our wireless access points, our static IP address, an IP block, etc. And I still could not solve the problem. After much frustration, I realized that sometimes you can stand too close to a problem. Sometimes the problem is not on your end. Sometimes you have to step back, look from a distance, and call Windstream. (laughs) Following the creation of a work order, a technician arrived the next day only to leave the job incomplete, our phones dead, and our internet still not up to speed. Not wishing to lose my salvation while on vacation, but seriously considering it, I called Windstream again. An escalated work order was created, and a service technician whose name was Victor, whose praises I will sing eternally, (laughs) arrived on Friday, and he said to me, Don't worry, we're going to get you up and running today. He kept his word. Voila! Resurrection. So, what if the internet and phones go down was one of those questions I was not anticipating for vacation or sabbatical, but we do now have a process in place for when it does. I have been itching to be back with you, though, not because I think you need me, but because you help me find and create meaning especially when the world seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. Curtains are tearing. Rocks are splitting. Graves are being opened through the bombs of warfare. The whole earth is shaking. It is quaking. Just in the three weeks I've been gone, Hamas, a terrorist group, engaged a surprise attack on Israel. In return, Israel has opened its arsenal. The Israel Defense Forces have admitted to bombing Palestinian refugee camps. Humanitarian aid cannot make it to the people who need it. Palestinians have no power, no fuel, no food, and hundreds of thousands have been displaced. Terrorism must be condemned without qualification. The same goes for retribution. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Chad and I were in Colorado when we learned of the mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. 18 people dead, 13 injured. A small, close-knit community traumatized and grieving. How many more people must be murdered before we restore a ban on assault rifles, which we once had in this country? These events are impossible to process alone or even with one's partner, as good as they may be. I missed you, church, because together we do really good work. We grieve with and alongside one another. We hope with and for one another. We can fan the flame of faith for each other when it's little more than a smoldering wick. Ultimately, we can remind one another again and again that the present word is never, ever the final word. Last Sunday, I was back in Illyria, and I decided to do double duty and visited a couple of churches that have been on my list. Actually, I'm vetting churches that I might visit when I am on sabbatical next year. The first congregation was in Avon Lake. Worship was at 9 a.m., and they celebrated All Saints Sunday a week early, but there is forgiveness for the remission of sin. The second 
congregation was in downtown Cleveland at Trinity Cathedral. Before worship began, they lost a phase of power in the building and it remained out for the entirety of worship. So let me pause homiletically and insert parenthetically. We should add a power failure ahead of or during worship to our list of things to discuss before the sabbatical. (laughs) While Trinity's new Muller Pipe Oregon worked, thankfully, the entirety of worship was without amplified sound and in the raw acoustic of a Gothic cathedral. It was glorious. It was how it should be. But I digress. Near the conclusion of worship, the congregation recited the Nicene Creed. I mumbled through it, crossing my fingers at some parts, omitting certain words at other, coughing occasionally always changing the language to gender expansive. But the final line struck me. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Looking for the resurrection. That's the title for your All Saints sermon. Not even knowing what the text was for today, that line captured my imagination. Today's gospel text for All Saints Sunday begins with Jesus breathing his last. He cried again with a loud voice and relinquished his spirit. I cannot imagine the trauma of crucifixion of experiencing it, witnessing it. Crucifixion is just too much to see, to behold. At some point, everyone has to turn away. We cannot look anymore. The narrator of Matthew's gospel, however, has a different agenda Just when we are about to turn and go, the author gives us an imperative command. Then look, you look, says the evangelist. The curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom in two, and the earth was shaken, the rocks were split, and the tombs were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised Why would the storyteller want us to look at and see this? And this question is just the beginning of my questions. I have have lots and lots of questions. For example, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom in two. Who or what did that? What kind of scissors does one need exactly? Pinking shears, maybe, just so the edges don't fray? How tall was the ladder since it was cut from the top? Yesterday, Marty Rowe and I were here repairing this window shade, and I'm not going to tell you how comedic the process was, but (laughs) tearing a curtain or a shade from top to bottom is... Take some work. Second, the earth was shaken and the rocks were split. Clearly, that's an earthquake, but what would its measurement be on the Richter scale? 7.0, maybe more? And third, this one gets my goat. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Without even giving us a spoiler alert, the narrator says, after the resurrection of him, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Wait a second. There's, there's a whole lot going on here. We don't know yet that Jesus has been raised. Indeed, he has just died, and he's not even been buried yet. And Matthew's chronology would have us think that at the moment of Jesus relinquishing his spirit, tombs were opened and many were raised, but they just hung out in the cemetery until Jesus' resurrection before going into the city of Jerusalem and appearing to many. How many people were raised exactly? Like what was the cutoff point for people being raised? If a person was dead for one year, that was possible, but two years was one year too many? 
Scripture says that no one knows where Moses was buried. Did he appear? And how much longer did they live? Days, weeks, months, years? Did they have to die again? Was there another funeral? So imagine with me for a second, if such a phenomenon were here, were to happen here in Illyria, how do you think one of our local funeral directors would respond if I called and said, uh, hi, Dave, this is Nathan at Washington Avenue. I know this may sound weird, but we need to <clears throat> revise a tombstone for a parishioner. Yes, there's, there's already a birth and a death date, but... Um, we need to add a semicolon after that death date and the current year because, and a dash because this parishioner showed up for worship. Surely the funeral director would think himself pranked, punked even, except for he's already received multiple calls. Mark, Luke, and John include nothing about the opening of the graves. Matthew is unique in that. Not to mention there's not a shred of supporting historical evidence from other sources that these graves opened and the people started walking around. But perhaps there's something here Matthew wants us to see. Look at the torn curtains. Look at the earthquake. Look at the split rocks. Look at the open graves Look at the risen people. Sometimes it's too hard to look because there's just too much to take in. At other times, we can get too close to a problem to see what else is going on. We've heard it said that we cannot see the forest for the trees. The cross is indeed a tree, and when it, like death, looms large, we cannot see anything else. It's hard to look for the resurrection when you're standing at the foot of the cross. No matter when death strikes, it always stings. Sometimes the pain of death is so great we can hardly make it. Other times, death can be a release. All of the time, though, death is a most articulate speaker. And death, pain, loss, and trauma can be so close that they consume our sight and we cannot see anything else. But Matthew whispers to each of us, look, look. Do we notice during the reading of this text what happened to the Roman centurion and his fellow military personnel? Matthew writes, now, when the centurion and those with him who were standing guard over the Jesus, the Greek says, when they saw the earthquake, what took place, they were terrified. I don't doubt for a minute that they were terrified, but let's be honest, who would not be? I am intrigued, though, that Matthew says that the Roman guards saw, not felt, the earthquake. But that's just the beginning. How did the Romans also who were standing watch over Jesus, who, were crucified, who was crucified outside Jerusalem city walls, also see that the curtain was split from top to bottom? We've heard it said and believed to be true that seeing is believing, but seeing the earthquake, seeing the curtain ripped and the graves opened from the vantage point of the hill called Calvary requires something other than 2020 vision. Still, they looked. They saw it all. And according to Matthew, these military agents of the Roman Empire made the good confession. Truly, this man was God's son. Oh, unless we forget, there were many women there watching looking from a distance 
They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had ministered to him. Among them were Mary the Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Matthew tells us that they were followers of Jesus, but there's more there than we realize. Their following is indicative of their discipleship. Their following is no different than the 12 disciples, except for the fact that the women don't flee like the men do. The women remain faithful in walking the way of the cross. They see everything, but not only do they see, they discern it all from a distance. They are watching. They are looking for the resurrection. So it's true, isn't it, that sometimes we stand too close to grasp the full picture. What will we see if we take a step back and look once again, but this time from a distance? Sometimes we have to take the long view to look and discern from a distance to see what we cannot see if We are perhaps too close, too focused on the problem, or too zoomed in on any one thing. But I have to tell you, church, I have seen the resurrection just this year. Every member of the stewardship committee can tell you that one year ago, We were crunching numbers, and then we had to go back to committees for them to reduce budget requests, and then we crunched numbers again. Standing so close to the numbers and looking at shifts, demographic changes, and more in our church's financial life, I concluded to myself that at the end of 2023, church leaders and I would need to have the conversation about moving to a part-time pastor. The anxiety I felt about that was huge. We passed a some $22,000 budget deficit. But would you look at God? There's a resurrection story here, church. Giving is ahead of plan. Expenses are way under plan. We're doing so well financially that we will likely not have to take our fourth quarter draw from our permanent funds. That has not happened before. I would have never imagined this possibility just 12 months ago. But now, from a distance... I think I'm looking at the resurrection. I cannot fully articulate what the presence and friendship of Sol Rosado has meant to me over these past five months. I was in a funk and could not see the road ahead as clearly as I once did or thought I did. And here comes Sol sailing on nothing less than the holy and chaotic wind of Pentecost, and boom! Resurrection. Soul's very life is a testament to the resurrection, and we are witnesses to that resurrection. When we look at soul for who they are and all that they are. Glennis Kovalt and I met earlier this week, and she told me of what she's doing with the Lorain County Urban League. She told uh, me of meeting with them, engaging them, those youth members and listening to their desires for life, school, family, more. Due to Glennis's imagination and communication with the Lorraine County LGBTQ leaders, we're going to engage a safe zone training during the season of Advent to prepare us for the one or ones who are to come. There's another example, too, one that did not make it in my manuscript. But when I walked through the double doors of the sanctuary, I heard the news that on Thursday of this week, we're going to be having a baby. (laughs) Resurrection Church. 
springing up with new life, even when we think that death has done its worst. So it's here, resurrection, because it is springing up all around us, even amidst the split rocks, the torn curtains, the earthquakes, the wars. Resurrection is here. I I don't know that 2023, 2023 is a year that I'd necessarily want to repeat. But from a distance, when we take it all in, when we choose to see the beauty and the terror, we will discover that we are looking for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.